Ano na yan? Yeah. Yeah. Baka gluta yan, Tol. Anak sa araw. Anak sa araw yan eh. Natural yan. Yan na lang ang meron. Okay, game. <laughs> so, <laughs> go. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So, uh, first off, um, let me introduce myself for some who might not know me very well. So, I am Arlene um, Encina, a BS Met, um, student number 8412, 74. Ano pa? Wow. Pero, um, siguro after four years of being a Met, um, I uh, changed my career into HR profession. Um, I'm in LinkedIn and my uh, screen name is Arlene Cabral. So I'm right now the um, HR director for uh, Continuum um, Global Solution, uh, which is uh, a business processing uh, outsourcing company uh, globally. All right. So brothers and sisters, so this is something that uh, Zenny and I put up that we would like to share with everyone. So we just take a break first on uh, te technical matters on geology. So we'll do first, uh, um, we'll just uh, look into something what is, you know, hype right now, which is about COVID-19. So uh, I'm not a medical profession uh, professional, but I try my best to do research as part of my job as an HR. I do have uh, a lot of uh, connection with uh, insurances, uh, brokers, uh, clinics, um, what else? Um, PESA, because yung, the, our company is uh, a PESA registered company. So now, a uh, disclaimer, everything is sharing. This is also what I do share. And some um, materials uh, came from Zen, from uh, University of Nottingham. So these are also the materials that we share to our employees uh, on a day in, day out to um, strengthen or really to highlight awareness in terms of safety, health, and wellness. And at the same time, uh, it's not only for employees, it's even for family, right? Ang haba na intro. Mm -hmm. Ay, sister, ayaw mag-down. Anong ayaw mag-down? Oo, oh, oh, how do I go about this? Sorry naman. Page down. Ayan na lang, ayan na lang. Alright. Sister, how can I take out this one? Para makita nyo, hi. Can you see the ano? Hindi, no? See. Yung half. We can see yeah, the screen. We can see the slide. Full, readable full. naman. Yeah. Uh, it's readable. Click mo na yung page view, tingnan mo kung may, may option. Ayan, ayan na. Okay. So, so as mentioned, during the pandemic, uh, we need to focus not only on just the physical, uh, but mental wellness as well. So, this is also a note to myself. So, um, working on site right now is limited to 50% uh, so far in the Philippines um, to ensure that there's still uh, social distancing. And then uh, while working from home is the new normal uh, for the majority, um, especially in a BPO where, uh, where before ang trend is they really want all the call center agents based in an office to ensure reliability when it comes to um, internet um, access and also system uh, access as well. So now, inaalaw na ngayon yung 50% na working at home. Um, so for the mental and physical wellness check, so these are all guides, something just, you know, it might be basic, but it is essential. And as I mentioned earlier, na, it can be something that we can go back to if, you know, in our free time, na, what am I need to check? Ba? So meron tayong before and after. So for the awareness part, uh, we are covering oh mind, God. habits, uh, physical and energy. So these are the questions that we can ask ourselves na baka just to let me know how and to check how we are faring so far when it comes to this uh, four um, aspect. So for, let's say for the mind, what are dominant thoughts right now? How are we feeling? And remember, we are trying to highlight that it's not just physical that we need to take care of, but even the mental wellness. And just to share, uh, because I am doing a regular connect with some people in the hospital. Uh, in the Philippines, um, it's not just uh, COVID uh, cases, which is high rising in numbers, but even those uh, 
people who are uh, experiencing depression. And then uh, I we went also to the PEDIA of my children uh, two weeks ago. And the uh, PEDIA also kind of mentioning that even children <laughs> na mga 15 years old and below are getting consultation kasi they are not they're not fit, they're not ready for the condition wherein nakakonfine, they are confi- in a confined space in, and it's more than a year already right now. So, yun yung mga questions that we need to check. Habits, uh, what are, you know, where do they take you? What are you been doing right now? How do you respond to stress in your working life? Uh, do you have ways to counterbalance stress? Uh, for the physical, uh, ito po is for everyone. I'm not an expert. I'm actually uh, 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 what you call it um, uh, um, a victim as well because I'm not much into physical activity. Where are your holding tensions? How is your body during the working day? And uh, are you sitting at your desk for a long period of time? And then for energy, uh, do you feel tiredness um, and then lethargy uh, and then uh, made you, you're not up to so much activity. And then, of course, lifestyle, uh, food and drink. So, ito yung mga questions that you need to ask yourselves uh, for the awareness. And then, uh, we now go to the after. So, we are now looking at uh, what are those uh, possible corrective actions or adjustment or even solution. So, again, we will just address what we discussed earlier on the mind, um, habit, physical, and energy. So on the mind, what we're trying to encourage here is there are suggestions about mindfulness and meditation or for those who have you know, the uh, uh, capacity or capability to walk in nature because in the Philippines, it's very limited. Uh, creativity or even music. Uh, for myself, um, because I just look over the, the um, social media, I'm kind of interested right now in to look into um, yung resin making na mga paperweight kasi parang it's gonna help you, you know, take your mind off somewhere else. Yung anak ko naman, he's a musician, artist by heart. So whenever I hear him playing the guitar or nakikita ko nagko-compose siya, I would know already that he's diverting his anxiety or his stress into music. So, and then, um, are you asking for help and support you need via social connectivity? So right now, um, I think it's really very important about uh, social media, uh, social, um, how do you call it, connection, like either Viber, um, what else, um, SMS, uh, Messenger of the Facebook, uh, or even SMS if it's just within the area. But uh, the cheapest way would be the, as long as you have the internet, would be the Viber or the Messenger of uh, Facebook. And sometimes if you have Instagram as well, uh, there's also the provision for the direct messaging. And then uh, for habits, uh, we need to address uh, what habits would you like to reduce or increase or introduce. Uh, because um, initially, we mentioned that we need to identify what have we built up already, especially in the last one year. So we need to check whether it's aligned, it's healthy, or it's helping us or not. And then something that we need also to and note to myself, morning stretch, regular breaks, uh, and you know the basic needs. And then what habits are we working on? So sometimes, uh, not sometimes, we encourage that uh, there has to be time away from gadgets. Uh, from what I have read, and to segue na tayo with the physical, that at least you can start with 30 minutes exercise if you're not you know, so much into physical. So for the physical, we need to look into workstation, the ergonomics. Uh, ventilation. So Nyong mentioned, mentioned about I need vitamin D. So it's something that, you know, uh, again, we need to, to look after and take care of ourselves. So and then alternate moving, uh, like sitting, walking and stretching. So because it will release, you know, more energy, uh, blood flow. And especially when we do exercise, uh, we release endorphins. And then for the energy, we need to increase exercise or increase rest. So 
um, again, I'm not a medical professional, but sometimes we need to check also the doctor because there has to be a balance because some people might not be really physically fit or they cannot manage a strenuous activity. So with that, we need to, to check first as well. Um, identify food diet according to your need. And then very important, which is uh, very basic, uh, water is very essential. So what is you know the norm or the, the basic that we know of? Eight glasses of water a day is a reasonable goal. Uh, but there are other forms as well of fluids, which can be from either water, other beverages and sometimes food. And for men, ideal is 15.5 cups or 3.7 liters. And for women, 11.5 um, cups or 2.7 liters. Next, uh, I am sorry. All right, safety protocol. So disclaimer, um, broad brothers and sisters this is might be basic but from my experience sometimes um, it's overlooked because uh, right now if there are some people are thinking that we already have the covid vaccine they are being complacent already but i think it's still necessary so uh, wash your hands often with especially with soap and water uh, and it is only when it is not available that we default to at least 60% alcohol. And every time you go outside or touch anything that is not, you're not sure about its a safety, uh, avoid touching the eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, which are actually the, the entry or access uh, for the virus. Uh, avoid close contact. Uh, this is very important, especially when you go to the grocery, um, when you go to the church, because the church is now e open um, to public, but with limited amount as uh, um, number of people allowed as well. But as much as possible, you be responsible for yourself if others are not. So like for myself, when I go, let's say, to the grocery or when I go to the doctor for checkup, I I take it on myself na ako yung nagpuput ng, ng social distancing with the others. And not just the social distancing. I make sure as well that I have my face mask and the face shield uh, as a double protection. And something also that uh, was shared just recently uh, to us with our wellness session, um, a medical professional mentioned that the normal uh, surgical face mask and then you add on another cloth uh, face mask will be uh, re what is recommended to ensure that we are protected. Or if we have the KN95 type of face mask, that will help as well. All right. And then uh, just to add on the social distancing, uh, we try to avoid as well uh, meeting people now. We take advantage of the video and phone calls, text, and actually this activity of Emmons, you know, every other Saturday or monthly, uh, uh, Saturdays, third Saturdays of the month is very helpful because aside from keeping us, you know, connected to our friends and family, um, it also helps encourage, uh, you know, following the safety protocols. So as mentioned earlier, cover your mouth and nose with a cloth face cover. So again, uh, just an additional because there are new variants have, um, coming in right now. So we mentioned about uh, two layers uh, for protection. Um, and then cover your cough when you cough and when you sneeze. And then clean and disinfect, disinfect frequently uh, for those uh, touch services uh, uh, daily. So for me, uh, on a practical personal uh, experience, I really make sure that I have gallons of alcohol. Um, I do make sure that I have supply of disinfectant uh, liquid spray uh, just to make sure that uh, nobody gets sick as far as you know COVID is concerned. And then uh, something just you know frequently asked questions that we are sharing, who is at higher risk? Uh, so according to the um, uh, Disease Control and Prevention uh, Committee, uh, older people or uh, the older adults uh, are more prone to, to the virus, um, especially those who are living in a nursing home. 
um, and then also those people who have pre-existing. So this is what you call as well the comorbidities, um, such as heart, lungs, liver disease, diabetes present, that's my illness as well, um, asthma, the same thing, um, severe obesity, uh, chronic kidney disease. Uh, these are those people who are also at risk and those with a weak immune system. So what to do? Stay home as much as possible. For my, my, my consultations, there are uh, situations that my doctors will just encourage uh, teleconsulting or telemedicine if there's no need for actual uh, laboratory tests or other face-to-face uh, -face consultation. They now encourage uh, teleconsultation or telemedicine. So um, those are the safety protocols. And then moving forward on something that, you know, would help as far as, you know, uh, food diet is concerned. But uh, before that, if there's no COVID vaccine available yet, maybe some have registered already and maybe some are, uh, have not yet done so, you can do have flu vaccine and pneumonia vaccine because this will help also to have a, a, a double layer of protection when it comes uh, to the virus. And then um, eat fresh and unprocessed food every day, ideally. So this one, I will not, you know, go much into details, but this is something that, you know, we are all aware for a healthy diet. Uh, again, drink uh, enough water. And then we are asked to eat moderate food with uh, moderate amounts of fat and oil. Um, and then something now, I'm going now into the COVID vaccine itself, just to share, you know, what I have as a data based on the research. Right now, what is available in the Philippines, which I can just uh, share and the others can also share uh, um, in between. So what we have now is AstraZeneca, Sinovac, and Pfizer. Pfizer just came in recently. So these are the vaccines available uh, by the government. So both the AstraZeneca and Sinovac are both in an active uh, vaccine, whereas Pfizer is, is like a... It's, they call it mRNA vaccines or like a piece of protein that will trigger uh, an immune response inside our body, according to the research. So for the dosage, uh, two doses a month apart for AstraZeneca, 14 to 28 days uh, for Sinovac, and then uh, for Pfizer, uh, they say that it's three weeks apart. So right now in the government, the AstraZeneca is given to A1, A2, and I will explain the priority list definition event later. And then for the Sinovac, I, which is I am a recipient of, administered to A3 or comorbidities person. Um, and then for Pfizer, apparently it's now open uh, for 12 years old and above. Uh, this is the list of the national priority list, ranges from A1 to C. So for the A1, these are more from the uh, health workers and even the non-professional, non-medical professional, but working in a health uh, or public and private uh, facilities. A2, senior citizen. A3 are person with comorbidities or, or people with, you know, pre-existing conditions. And then the others, you know, are just... Um, self-explanatory, but something to highlight, uh, the next in line would be the A4. Uh, these are frontline personnel uh, in essential sectors, um, which includes uh, restaurants, uh, grocery, um, what else? Um, I cannot think of anything right now. So anything about non-health uh, facilities. So that's the category of A4. So now the next in line uh, to receive the COVID vaccine by the government are the A4 um, in the priority list. So a little update. So most of the local government units are now open for A1 to A3. A recent update will include already A4 and the timeline is sometime end of May or sometime June to start with the vaccination. But for Region 7, so this is in Cebu, 
uh, the government uh, via the Department of Health have opened up already the registration even to the private companies and they call it uh, via the Project Balik Buhay. So if there's anyone who has friends in Cebu who might be interested, um, um, they can reach out to registration at projectbalikbuhay.com if uh, they have, you know, they are company that cannot afford to buy personally, uh, not personally, I mean corporate capacity of the COVID vaccine for their employees. And then uh, just uh, very briefly on the COVID vaccine for private companies in the Philippines, it's open uh, via uh, ne open, uh, what you call it, the Go Negosyo and uh, via Unilab. So these are the details uh, for no Go Negosyo, they have Covaxin and then for Unilab, it's Covovax. So the Covaxin is um, in, uh, made in India uh, by, by Bharata Biotech and it uh, has an efficacy of 70, uh, for 78%. While the Covovax is uh, developed by American-based Novovax, but it's also manuf manufactured in India and it has an efficacy of 95.6% um, as of May. So just quickly so that you know what are the costs for Covovax and Covaxin, 1,900 respectively. Um, and then what is critical would be the administration, something to share that um, critical for private companies when they buy their own uh, vaccine would be to take care of the cold chain. So on the purchase, on the delivery, on the storage, and as well as the administration. Uh, because uh, based on personal um, experience, even just the delivery of the vaccine on site, uh, there has to be a, a proper and well uh, uh, time coordination. And then even on the site of the COVID vaccination, there are several um, medical professionals who are helping out and at the same time, several volunteers just to make sure that there's um, um, structure and or orderliness in the area. So I mentioned already about the procurement. So this is just part here for reference, but again, it's not a, a, an easy, um, how do you call it? It's not an easy transaction to do. So big companies like um, Cocentrix, uh, Unilever, um, Accenture uh, with at least 10,000 and more employees can afford because the cost uh, for doing all the cold chain and administration uh, will compensate for the cost uh, with also with their uh, cost benefit to their employees. And at the same time, there are um, accredited uh, vaccine facilities uh, for the administration. So far, what I know of is the Reliance um, company, that's the name, uh, who, are, who was accredited by the government uh, to do the vaccination for uh, uh, private companies. And then just um, also some more uh, few FAQs. And this is uh, um, shared by Lacton Insurance, our network in the company. Uh, about uh, risk for taking vaccine. So they're saying that not all will have an, um, complications, but that's why they're careful uh, for those people with comorbidities because they need to ensure that the person is physically uh, uh, fit. Not fit, but as far as the basic tests are concerned, um, they are um, qualified or fit to take the vaccine uh, prior, you know, the vaccination. And then are these uh, vaccine safe? Of course, uh, it um, has to be authorized by, by the EUA, by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, that's why, as I mentioned, I just recently added the Pfizer because Pfizer was just made um, available locally. Um, so that's the the more um, available data for uh, Philippines and in general. And then uh, something that was uh, shared by um, Zeni, uh, this is um, uh, taken from the workshop held in University of Nottingham. So this is about functional breathing. So it, this also helped because uh, COVID-19 um, uh, affects more the respiratory. 
So the, in here, you will uh, we will discuss what are the importance of breathing, uh, about stress and anxiety, physiology of breath and dysfunctional breathing, practical um, exercises and uh, resources. So why is breathing important? Um, of course, sustain life, enables communication, um, support posture, manages fatigue, stamina, concentration, anxiety, and baseline health. So it's important that we know how to ensure that we do it properly with our you know, inhale and exhale or breathing way. And in here, you would see that uh, there are different, um, what do you call this, um, um, category or type when it comes to, let's say, shallow or fast breathing. It's, um, they call it sympathetic, parasympathetic when it's slow breathing. And then uh, breath should be under conscious control because uh, it can influence autonomic uh, function of our body. Um, um, the one is that when you're feeling anxious, uh, don't take big breath. Breath through the nose, relax the belly. Kaya ang kaya sabi ko nga, sa inyo na yung amit, pag sinabi ko na yun eh, pag yun lumabas at binigil. Alright. And then, Zen, would you like to chime in? Um, yeah, do you, do you want me to, to say a bit of this, uh, this, this is, as, as Arlene said, this is the workshop that I attended, uh, online and the, the, the professor who gave the workshop is a, in fact, she was a, a music professor, but she's also a yoga teacher. And the key thing that I picked up from, uh, from the workshop is that we have to breathe through the nose. The nose is for breathing and the mouth is for eating. So it's to kind of inhale and be consciously inhale and exhale properly. This, there is a proper way of breathing. And one of the very practical things that I've got from the workshop was if you are feeling anxious and kind of stress, you feel it in your back. So you feel a tense a kind of tenseness in your back. So you just relax your back and you put your, you, you feel your diaphragm on your belly. And this is a kind of 25 second kind of exercise, which if you do kind of regularly, it will become a very natural thing. So you, we, we can all do this together. So one hand on your chest, the other hand on your belly and you breathe in and count seconds so through your nose yeah through one two three four five that's five seconds breathe out one two three four five seconds and you do that continuously for however length of time you want to do so it's like this breathe out breathe in and out again. So if you feel any tenseness in your body while you're sitting down, doing your work, you're in your day-to-day -day activity, if you are working from home, I find it's a very, very kind of useful exercise. You can also do it even while you're walking. So to me now, it's a very, it's a very natural thing for me to do. If I go walking, running, or even when I'm just simply in the kitchen and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling very, very stressed. I had a very busy day. So I just do automatically one, two, three, four, five, breathe out and never through your mouth. Okay, that's my take of the workshop. Over to you, Arlene. Thank you, Zen. And then uh, to proceed, uh, we have this uh, breathing pattern disorders. Um, they call it chronic hyperventilation. So in here, it was discussed that the carbon dioxide is not just a waste gas. It also um, uh, help releases oxygen in the body. So um, what it's saying is that if uh, the carbon dioxide level increases, the respiratory center is stimulated. So if you will notice for anyone who's been um, diagnosed or um, just as, um, as 
as uh, what do you call it, uh, a suspect a, a patient for COVID, they normally take in the oxygen level of the person. And uh, for myself, actually, I, I got that what you call the oxon oximeter, uh, just to make sure that, you know, we are prepared because um, the COVID-19 is really very um, uh, destructive to, to everyone. And then, as mentioned on the body oxygen level test, so this is uh, you take the normal breathing and breathe out through your nose and start the timer. So if it says that if you can last for uh, 20 to 25 seconds, then you are healthy. <clears throat> if you can hold your breath. And then if it's lower, you have a dysfunctional uh, breathing uh, concern. And then if it's under 10 seconds, then you have seen serious symptoms already of uh, your uh, body oxygen level. All right. And then um, um, additional uh, further oxygen um, level sex check. So again, nose are for breathing and mouth for eating. And then um, we are given already a sample of um, Zen on how to go about it. So something that's a takeaway for this session that we can try in our own free time, one hand on the chest and one hand on the belly. So it's a five second interval for breathe in and breathe out. And then um, equal way breathing. Um, sit or lie down comfortably, knees lower than the hips if sitting. Uh, breathe in and out through the nose. Uh, soft belly encourages to move. Encourage lower ribs to move as well. So inhale and exhale the same length. And then if there's no counterindication, then it means that you, you know, are practicing the subtle breathing already. And then uh, just to, to give recognition on the resource materials, or you can look for it as well for further data. You can check the breathing book by Donna Fari. Um, and then um, Essential Pranayama, Breathing Techniques for Balance, Healing, and Peace by Jerry Givens. And then we put there uh, here link uh, regarding oxygen and advantage, oxygen advantage, and also uh, the breathe to heal by Max Storm. So, Zen and everyone, that's all, and thank you for listening. Back to you, Zen. <laughs> Good job, Dol. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have. You have taken something from that. <laughs> or meron kayong isi-share? Anything practical to share for us to fight uh, ano ba to? Yung iba, very burned out because of Zoom. You move from one meeting to another and you're constantly sitting. Ang importante daw, you need to have a proper chair and Ventilation and then you do your exercise, breathing exercise. It helps a lot. Oh no, anybody else would like to share? May si Vincent, yeah, that's si Vincent. May Go ahead. Hmm. Sa office namin, tinuruan di kami ng parang cardio. Ang sinasabi, mag breathe in ka sa nose, pero ang breathe out mo, breathe ang exhale mo sa, sa mouth. Alin hmm. na mas okay? Um, ang, 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 ano kasi, if you, if you breathe in through your mouth, magda, magda dry ang mouth eh. Hindi, hindi ito, breathe in sa nose. So breathe, breathe, breathe out sa mouth. Sa mouth. No, even if, if you use your mouth for breathing, even if it's in or out, it doesn't matter how, but ang mouth mo magiging dry. So that's why sometimes it costs according to the lecture the workshop that i attended mm -hmm. it, it causes like maga hyperventilate ka mm. yeah and then uh less oxygen as well for some for, yeah. for some some research shows that um mas mabuti talaga to breathe in uh, maraming ano yan eh may mga yoga oh, ang, ang, ang ang parang Nawawala ka, Tol. 
Naka-free si Vincent. So, naka-free. At siguro, you know, we, we all have our own habits. Nasanay na tayong huminga ng... <sighs> at saka pagkapagod tayo. <sighs> so, apparently, that's wrong. So, what I'd say is kung anong-anong nakasanayan ninyo. But for me, I got, because of the workshop that I attended, I got so used to doing close my mouth, mouth is for eating, nose for is, is for breathing. Lalo pa pag natulog ka. Pag natulog daw, you should never breathe in your mouth. In fact, mm -hmm. you can now buy strips that you can put in your Thank mouth. You. Pag matulog ka. Kasi di ba minsan nagda-dry yung throat mo tapos mm -hmm. nakaubo ka. Apparently, that's the reason because you breathe through your mouth which you should never do. You should always breathe through your nose. Nose for breathing, mouth only for eating. Mayroon lang kal pagka barado ilong. Kailangan <laughs> Kailangan mo ng ano tol. Uh, you need a CPAP machine. <laughs> Ako nga may sipa pa ko tol eh kaya kaya sigurado ako sa nose ako nagbe-breed. Yeah. <laughs> Dahil yung yung sinasabi ni Paul Vincent, uh, sa athletics 'yun eh, uh, sa mga competition yeah. na pang endurance, dapat mm -hmm. talaga ganoon. Tama, tama. Diba, sa cycling, mm -hmm. cycling frequently uh -huh. open yung mga pila. Hindi naman yung open na